So we're here with my boy Anthony Guzman. Yep, yep. I met this dude like what five years ago? Five, six years ago, yep. Back when the struggle was real for him. Yep. And now he's built a seven, eight figure. Eight figure. But who's counting? Yep. An eight figure e com business. And we're gonna talk about how he did it, what he went through, what beliefs he had to transcend, family, friends that he lost, whatever it is. Just entrepreneurship, the struggle, the challenges. And the, the journey. Parts, the journey. It yep. never stops. Yeah. So stop. let's get into it. Where should we start? Should we talk about how, how I met you? Yeah, let's talk about how we met real quick. You want to tell the story or me? Well, every time you tell a story, you lie. You just make no, up. No, no. Every, tell time, the real every story. time we tell the story, is different. <laughs> <laughs> every time. I've never right, heard the Let same me tell story. the story, and then if it's wrong, then you can stop it. All right. Well, watch them take you on the loop. All right, cool. So I just moved to uh, Santa Clarita, California. Mm. or a valencia area where six flags match mountain is yeah and um i was walking into the self-help books uh situation or the where the books are the self-help and business and then um i see some guy like just sitting there and i was reading my book or whatever and i seen you just sitting there or whatever and i was like, all right this guy kind of looks like a square let me see if i'm gonna <laughs> rob him <laughs> then uh i think i like then i like ask you something i was sitting there and you like made some like small ass comment just interrupting my thought you were like oh yeah i read that one and i was just like what the heck i was, uh, I was like said something like oh that's a good book too. it was like thinking grow rich or the secret or something yeah, like yeah, that yeah and you were like yeah i read that that's a good one yeah and i was just like dope and i was freaked out because at that time like none of my other friends had known about that st type of stuff no one read like you got to go through that like awakening a little bit by yourself yeah. yeah so i was always at the library by myself so you always think you're crazy and yeah then you're probably going through your crazy stuff yeah i already been through that like a and year then I showed before that. my church remember and I, uh, we'll get to that oh uh, like, yeah, 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 yeah 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 we'll get to that too so yeah go ahead so then um i don't know we just met and then we we're chilling at barnes and noble talking about life and law of attraction and like four hours go by and then we're just like all right cool like you want to hang out tomorrow or something yeah and, and then, then you left off you were like you're like, so you read yeah you're like okay you got dreams we're like yeah what's your dreams and you start talking <laughs> about your dreams and then you we started talking about you're like i want to get into real estate when i'm 30 and i was like why don't you just do it now just do yeah. the child you were like yeah i was like just start now and you were like yeah you know what you're right and we both looked at each other you were like you like bad bitches i was like <laughs> yeah he was like me too <laughs> yeah we just connected we talked about like our lifestyle girls and then we're just like okay we have a bunch of that's enough interest to start hanging out we yeah. skated i didn't skate at that time but like we had a lot in common so yeah you told me you used to skate yeah and then um from there we kicked it for like four hours at barnes and noble mm -hmm. and then we found uh, out our moms lived like literally a street over from each other yeah much. over in uh palmdale area so palmdale california so i was like well that's crazy and then from there, I believe, like, we started hanging out, and you started introducing me to, like, some of the, your friend group over mm -hmm. in Santa Clarita area, um, you know, going to, like, parties and stuff, and yeah, the girl scene over there, so I was just like, okay, cool, this guy's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> and then, yeah we were like, all right, cool. I we think we actually went to a, a USC dorm or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think that was, like, the second time we hung out. It was my, my girl now she it wasn't was, your girl at that time she though, wasn't right? yeah she was my best friend for like eight years yeah. and then now she's my girl but that was her dorm and she had like some party and all her girls were there and stuff yeah. and i invited him and then he was like what are you doing and i was writing a book and you were like you're writing a book yeah. and i was like yeah you're like that's tight and yeah. usually when i told people my age they were like okay like why you know and i was like it's a personal development book i'm like all right never mind so yeah we just hit it off start kicking it I think what's pretty cool is that uh, you've seen the whole journey from start to finish, really. You know, like when somebody's like, hey, I have a dream, I have goals. And you've seen where it was like, you know, I, I remember a time where I was down bad and you bought me Chipotle because I was like, hey, bro, like, you know, like, yeah, I, I, shit got real. And I remember your first. Go ahead. Go ahead. And then, um, yeah, I mean, you, you, you know, you've seen the whole the whole glow up, really. You see me get into real estate, uh, make money, lose money. I remember one time, I don't know what it was. You had some type of money or something. Remember one time I made like 80000 in one month? And then I was like, bro, like I forgot what I it to, was. I had to drive down to the next city to calm him down. <laughs> he called me. He, he literally called me. He's like, 
I had no money could come that fast. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I'm tripping out. My heart's beating fast. He was just like, this is crazy. This uh, universe is crazy. I was like, what's good with you? Yeah, because uh, I was doing e-commerce and then we we're at Barnes & Noble. I was like, I want to get into real estate. Got into real estate, started wholesaling, which uh, if you don't know what it is, people, uh, you can look it up on YouTube, you know. It's pretty much you just flip a contract. Um, and one month I made like 80000 And I was just like, oh, dang, like this whole manifestation stuff and business and entrepreneurship stuff is real you know mm. like i was doing e-commerce but i wasn't making money like you was that, making you know? like a couple grand you told me yeah like i was a, a like month. my best month i probably made like ten thousand, but average it was like two to five thousand you, and you know? told me your family thought like your sister and stuff was like what are you doing sitting on the couch and you're like i'm, I'm making money online and yeah so yeah. there's a movie called uh half baked and there's a guy on a couch like some bum dude they just call him guy on the couch so that's what my family they that's what they used to call me because oh i used God. to just be on the couch on my laptop so, like building shopify stores you know running facebook ads and they didn't understand it yeah so they're just like bro like you know go get a job or whatever you know you go through the whole situation with your mm -hmm. with your family you know the crazy stuff so so before i know how we talk sometimes we all over the place so let's start when <laughs> you were you were down bad what happened okay from what i remember you were f flipping house or contracts in real estate and you had we had set up your living room in your mom's house we like moved her dining table and you made like desk and stuff and hired like people to do cold calling and uh you had got a deal and you were hyped on it because you're about to close on like a good amount of money and so you gave your mom like the last of what you had mm -hmm. like 15 grand you're like i just want to bless my mom man yeah. take care of her right now make sure she's straight and you were literally driving to the bank to close the deal and what happened all right, so what happened was I was going to get a 14 unit over in Pasco, Washington. We bought it for 650. We got it on a contract for 650. We were going to flip it, make like 500, 600,000. So I was like, all right, cool, I'm on. Me and my partner were going to split it. I was like, all right, cool, that's like 300 grand for me, 250, 300 grand. And I remember I had like 15 or like probably like 15 to 30K in my bank account left. And um, I gave it to my mom. So I was like, hey, I'm about to go close this. I'm going to the bank to go wire the money for escrow. And as I'm on my way to the bank, uh, my partner called me. He's like, dude, we can't do this. Gave me this whole run, like rundown why we can. And uh, long story short, it didn't close. So I didn't get the money. And I gave my mom the money. So I felt bad. Like, you couldn't ask for that I back. I couldn't ask for that back. So I'm like, that's my mom. And, and like, did he take your deal at the time? What was that? Would that would, did that partner take your deal at the time? So it turns out later he did, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's just shady stuff that went on, you know, but I'm a young kid, you know, I'm like 20 at the 21 at the time or something. So I don't know any better. I'm just like excited. I'm about to get a big bag, you know? So, but yeah, I mean, that happened and I was down bad, bro. So like long story short, he went from, I'm about to be on, I'm rich as heck. What car you want? What car you want in his head? And he's just literally like, he's like, bro, what just happened? This dude's like what's going on is i can't ask for the money back from my mom like yeah. that's been one of my dreams to be able to bless my mom you know and then so um uh, we're he, <laughs> he called me and i was in my mom's garage and you were like you're like bro <laughs> life is crazy don't leave the house everything <laughs> costs money you wouldn't believe it <laughs> you're like money everything yeah, costs. i was like stay home bro you're like, like stay home don't leave your house <laughs> everything costs and i was like relax bro because because anthony when he has a lot of money he's everything is easy bro why do people even trip on money like money is bro like why let's just live let's have fun when Experience you're up you're it. up when he's up he's up <laughs> then when he's down and loses <laughs> this dude calls the most scarce mindset <laughs> ever he's like you wouldn't believe it like <laughs> life is yeah. expensive so so we were in the i was like let's meet up we were having this phone call and in, in, in meeting over Fortnite with his friend yeah, mario Fortnite, yeah. and i was like let's just meet up at chipotle don't trip so we're in the uh, parking lot, and he's telling me about what happened. He has no money. Bills are due. He's like, man, this is just crazy how this happened. What, what is God trying to tell me? Like, did I do something wrong? Is this karma? And I'm just like, man, I'll just get you some food. Let's just chill. So I buy him some Chipotle, and I'm like, it's okay. Like, we got our imagination. We were talking about your Imagine tattoo. Yeah. And uh, I was like, come on, bro. Like, everything came from the mind. So we're like, let's just make something up. <laughs> So this dude, <laughs> so what this dude does, I also I like I also like 
sing. I have music on Apple Music, Spotify, dance, and like make art and stuff like that. Oh, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> and this, dude, this dude, Anthony's like, bro, I, I was reading on you on uh, I, I watched a video on YouTube and I was reading on it. And there's this thing called art appraisals. Like, there's like these people who appraise art for millions of dollars, and it's like a tax write-off for rich people. But artists think like this is really worth millions. You know, it's like a line on the canvas or something. So he hops. On, he, he he does research. Hops on the phone with an appraiser. He's like, <laughs> first of all, my my name. Everyone calls me DJ, but my first name is Dewan. Um, so Anthony hops on the phone with the appraiser, and he's like. Good evening. <laughs> we're, we're like stressed out, broke in the parking lot. He's like, good evening. He's like, yes. He's like, um, is this the appraiser? He's like, yeah, that's me. And he's like, all right, cool. Like, how does this work? So he kind of broke down the process and he's like, what's the, uh, Anthony's like, so what's the most you ever appraised a piece of art for? He's like, oh, I don't know, maybe like 900, um, you know, 1 million around the area. Yeah. And both of our eyebrows go up <laughs> at each other. We're like, what? Like, not a quarter to our name. You know, I just put my last on his Chipotle. <laughs> and then he's just like, well, I have this uh, French artist here named uh, Dijon. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, he's like super rare. It's uh, He's selling this guy. He's like, this guy's amazing. You know, he does this dance style art piece and the people go crazy and, it's just it's art piece is just worth it's just worth more than money you know it's it's he's selling, them selling a dream, a dream he's right now. selling them a dream and this guy's like okay okay yeah maybe you could, he's like no if you get this in a in a museum or something like man like your commission like bro you don't even know this dude's like bro bring him in bring him in and so they he gets off the phone and he looks at me and he's just like can you paint and i'm just like i, I don't know i kind of could draw so now we're trying to figure out how to <laughs> paint the fucking canvas yeah. and we're gonna bring it to this art and anthony's like i'll put the suit on he's like we just rip your shirt a little bit throw some paint on you make it look like all you do is sit there and paint and yeah. he's like and then we'll take it to this guy you just look tired and just be like i'm such an artist and he's like yeah. and i'll sell him <laughs> <laughs> like one thing about me is that like i'm a hustler and if i'm down bad i'm like i'm looking for the next scheme i'm like how am i gonna get some money so i was just like you know what i was like i was like fuck it you know what you're i was like you're an artist you're an artiste your name's dijon he's a dijon yeah dijon like i was like because it sounded like french and i was like this guy's an artist like swear to god it's gonna go it's gonna go up so i was just looking on google i was like I was like, we got to sell this, bro. I was like, you got to pay something and then get it appraised and then we're going to sell it. And then we're going to cash out. And then uh, yeah, I, I was just looking for the next scheme. I was like, man, dude, I got to get some money somehow. So but that, I, that's just what's cool. Like, that's something like, you know what I mean? That's funny because that's an honest story. Yeah. And like, looking back at it now, it's like, dude, that's, that's just funny, bro. That's funny. just something like how I am. Like, bro, like, we just got to figure it out. Like, Tell your grandkids that story. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and it's fun going through all the trial and errors, like trial and error. And like you say, like life is funny when it's not happening to you. Yeah, that's my saying. I always it. tell people, I'm like, life is funny when it's not happening <laughs> to you. Because like, if the, like, the homie's down bad or something, like, damn, bro, like get your money over something, you know? Yeah. But like when it's me, I'm like, damn. Bro, yeah, when, like, it's, when you're going through it, it hurts. But being able to look back at those stories and trial and error of entrepreneurship and it's just really, it's really cool. One time I was, I was homeless and you, I, I called you. It's like, you wouldn't believe it, bro. <laughs> I'm homeless right now. You were like, that shit's funny because it's not happening to me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's cool that we could have that understanding, like that friendship where it was like, we could laugh about it. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, probably at that time you weren't like, you are probably like, ha ha ha. Like, <laughs> I was like, ha ha Like, <laughs> with your uh, fists all balled up. But like, it's cool that we could go back and laugh about it and like, that's what got us here you know today and all those trial and errors is like i know we're jumping around a lot but really you know those stories are really just to be like you know everybody's down bad somebody that's watching this is probably down bad right now and they think like damn dude how am i going to do it you know but i literally i was just always looking for the next play and one thing about me is that what i'm good at is uh i'm a good like orchestrator mm -hmm. i don't I'm not a good implementer, you know. Uh, I'm really good at putting two in, like putting one here, and like, hey, you're good at this. All right, cool. Hey, he's good at that actually too. So if we come together, we could build this, and then we could push it. Hey, this guy's a marketer. We're gonna get this. Boom, boom, boom. And then that's how I, how I always build like my businesses. Cause I'm not like the way my mind mind thrives is like just thinking about the 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 business and also just like, hey, how can we 
put it to action creating the machine creating the machine but i'm not the machine itself i don't really like to go and do the work that's like that's boring to me you know like i feel depressed and i'm just like oh this is boring like sitting at a desk and stuff like that i'm just like all right you know what he's good at this let's get this guy here and we're gonna make this happen you know and down to uh we talked about you know when i was in real estate i didn't have an office but i got my mom's living room and i put like four or five desks in there and i got four or five cold callers in there and i was like hey it was like a sweat shop i was like hey we're gonna come in here every morning and we're gonna cold call and we're gonna get some deals happening you yeah, know yeah. i was young i was just like bro i was just hungry i just wanted some like i needed some money because i was just like i just wanted to live different you know I, I grew up with no money so i was just like by any means like something's got to give you know so i was just like i just put everybody together and you know turn my mom's house to an office and kind of went from there you know but it's it's cool to look back on those days remember like you know you've seen the whole thing where i was okay i was up down back up down like that's entrepreneurship for you you know it's like it's never really like kind of like steady at least from uh like steady growing at least from my like my perspective or from like where i've been through it's always been like boom 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 but luckily i've never been down like bad bad where i couldn't pay for no bills or nothing for a while you know i've been fortunate and blessed enough to uh learn my through my mistakes and others and understand that you know taxes is for real you gotta pay taxes and to save and invest your money you know and put it in smart places and let your money grow compound and really just to protect your you know start building wealth and start to protect it so hopefully you know god willing um nothing happens but i'm trying to set up my life where it was like if i'm down bad ever i'm not really down bad i'm just like I still got my invested investments to protect me and, you know, kind of just go from there. Get out that, uh, the survival mode. And being down is usually just a real, realistically a lesson if you perceive it right. Yeah. <clears throat> it's, it really is just a lesson, you know. You got to go through a lot of stuff um, to get to that next level. One thing I realized about my life is uh, every time I was going through things where in business or personal life, it was always to get to that next level when you're in the moment you're just like man like god why like why are you doing this to me you know like why me like i'm trying to better my life and for me and my family why me but then really he's just trying to prepare you you know to uh to extend to the next level because you know that's what i want to do mm-hmm. go to the next level but <clears throat> the anthony from five years ago wouldn't be able to run the multi-million dollar business that i you know have now without the lessons you got yeah like there would be no way i would run it to the ground or do something crazy you know so because when you're young and you want you're like 20 or something you're like i, I want to end in my bank account yeah. right now yeah but you kind of don't you you you're looking at youtube you're looking at different things you're seeing a lambo you're seeing a big house but you're not thinking um interest rates leadership yeah. organization systems being in place to automate your business mental space no yeah. um you're not thinking about all that like you're thinking i just want that but you you don't know like do you want outgrowing your circle do you want outgrowing everything leaving your, your environment friends, like yeah some dude told me the other day really well off dude was we were talking and he told me you know what a lot like you're if you want a new life for yourself you know what it costs he's like your old one and every bit of it he was like and that's the people what people don't understand he was like it costs every bit of your old habits your old beliefs your old where you used to hang out, like your environment, the people you surround yourself with, you gotta give it all up and replace it with something new. So, yeah, yeah. like that was kind of what I talked about earlier. I was like, you know, the people that you surround yourself with, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Like, meaning whoever you're around, you surround yourself with on on a day to day basis. You know, whether that's close friends, family, whatever. Like, they just keep on like. You don't know it at the time, but they're sucking your energy out. And they're just like, you don't even know it, but they're just super negative or they're just like have doubts or the self-belief isn't there. So, and it, and it affects you. You got a problem know? for every solution. Yeah. And like, yeah, they exactly. And, um, you know, you just got to get rid of all that, all those people. And when I got rid of all those people and started focusing on myself, you know, being a 
kind of selfish and and um trying to focus on me that's when things kind of started going you know you moved out of your environment i moved out of my environment and uh that's one thing i always tell people too like move out your hometown because you feel comfortable there you know if you move out you uh you get to grow you meet new people and uh you're in a new environment seems scary but yeah figure out your interest that's growth like you know you pretty much when they say like hey growth is being uncomfortable that's that's true every time i've been uncomfortable i got put like in a position where god bless me with like you know we scaled a company super fast super big and it was super uncomfortable it was like because it's growth you know i was like i went from making good money you know doing e-commerce and partnering up with my uh you know with my partner and scaling the business super big you know he helped me scale it and i was the one running the whole ship so i was like oh man like this is crazy we went from zero to like 17 18 employees within like 12 months or some 18 months or something so that's pretty big you know we had 17 18 employees out here in las vegas office we had like 500 plus virtual assistants overseas so it was like it was a lot you know to kind of handle and to put those systems and processes in place but that's what i used to ask god for like hey like i'm ready like <clears throat> put me in these positions so i could grow cause that's what i wanted to do i wanted to grow so that's really cool i'm learning a lot from this conversation so to keep them on track you had you were down bad you were figuring these things out how did we get let's 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 sw- shift them to how we you got over to ecom we were there was so i was doing mm-hmm. e-commerce first yeah when but we like, met yeah on like a small scale i was like 17 18 small scale drop shipping on shopify and then when i turned like 20 21 somewhere around there i started doing a uh, real estate wholesaling and some fix and flips um did that for a few years and then i got back into e-commerce mm-hmm. and then my e-commerce company started taking off so i was making more money on my e-commerce uh company than i was my real estate and real estate was just wasn't for me talking to people and just doing a lot of stuff i didn't really like you know and i was just like man why am i still doing real estate i could do e-commerce scale this it's a lot more scalable uh it fits my personality more my my lifestyle so screw real estate so i got back into e-commerce started a automation business uh but before that before you found that like like for the people out there who are like looking for what they want to do or what aligns with them you had trial and error like we were sitting there trying to think should we make an e-com like a, a coffee brand remember yeah. we, were, we were writing out coffee brand ideas then you stumbled across private label then you stumbled across vas yeah and then you were like wait i could put this together and and then you just naturally gravi- gravitated toward amazon or yeah amazon drop shipping <laughs> um you know, there's a lot of trial and error in between all that stuff, you know, even with real estate, like learning the real estate game and um, same thing with the e-commerce. But uh, what was the question that you, you said again? No, I was just um, helping them understand, like, it wasn't just like, oh, so I just jumped into e-commerce. Like, there was a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah, there was a lot of stuff in between. Um, but then you were just Miscellaneous saying stuff you started your e-commerce st- and it was doing better than real estate and then yeah and then um i was just like you know what i like e-commerce more um fits my lifestyle <laughs> more so i kind of just did that and then uh you know i was doing okay i was doing like you know six figures a year and then um <laughs> i hit up my partner now and on instagram i think he was talking crap about e-commerce on youtube and I was like, hey, bro, like, I'll build you a store, like. For free. Yeah, for free. Because I was just like, bro, like, don't. I felt kind of, like, not disrespected, but I was like, bro, like, come on, like, this is, like, how I make my money. And you're over here, like, dissing it. <laughs> so I hit him up, and he was like, all right, cool, like, yeah, build me a store. It'll be cool for my YouTube content, see if it's real or not. So I was like, all right, cool. I built him a store. Um, I think the store did, like, 30000 in, like, eight months or something like that. And he was like, oh, what? I didn't do nothing. Cause it's automated, you know. We're we're doing everything on our behalf with the virtual assistants, and um, so he was just like, "Hey, like, I think he starts seeing all these other people making like you know twenty million, thirty million a year." So he was like, "Hey, you know, some of my peers are making this much money. 
you know how to do the back end. What if we partnered up? I got the marketing. He had a following, you know? So we partnered up. It made sense. I was like, hey, I know how to do the back end. You have a following. If we partner up, we can scale this thing, you know? So we did pretty good. Uh, I moved out to Vegas because that's where he's from. So I was like, okay, screw it. I'm going to move out to Vegas. Brand new city. Um, originally from LA area, Palmdale. And um, yeah, dude, then we kind of just took it off from there. And then it was just successful right off the bat. That's like the power of social media, the power of having uh, the following, you know, the influence. So his his following, audience. his audience, um, he's in the financial. Estate. Yeah, financial, uh, real estate, really. You know? So yeah. all of his people usually are people who are interested in investing and growing yeah. money. And so he put your business model, business in, front model in front of his audience. And then we and how many people beautiful. jumped on right off the bat? Like, like maybe 30? <laughs> uh, right off the bat, like the first month, we had probably like 50 to 100 people. And you were charging them what for a store? Um, the beginning, it was like 20. Then we started charging like 30,000. Uh-huh. So, you know, if you do the math, we're, you know, we're, we're doing pretty good. But... Um, the thing is scaling that fast, you know, is like trying to find virtual assistants. Like it was tough because it's like really like a, almost like a unicorn company. Like there's no company out there that just grows that fast. That's not normal, you know. Yeah. But we, the thing is that that's the that's the beauty in having the following. When you have the following, the audience and then selling like high ticket items. Mm -hmm. So throughout this, you know, past two years being in a uh, partnership with them. I started like just seeing like everything like okay he's more of a content creator um he just promotes you know his businesses he doesn't work on his businesses or in his businesses he just he's the marketer he's the face he's the face he just content and pushing it out on youtube tiktok instagram whatever so i was just like you know what i gotta start doing the same thing because i was like irrelevant on instagram i still am i probably have like 1500 followers or something like that you know but um i was just like man if i start doing that myself like i could be making a lot of money too you know just mm -hmm. high ticket items and having an audience mm -hmm. once you have an audience you could kind of start anything and be successful right off the bat yeah especially if you build like a genuine community that really is loyal to you and they believe what you say and you're like really following through on what you're yeah if you're an, if you're an authority in the in the niche whatever you're speaking on and you're the real deal you know like if people come and try to like because there's a lot of people out there that are on youtube and stuff that are like they don't they're not like not scamming people but like they're trying to sell courses on stuff that they don't even really do you know so i didn't want to be that that's why i never went hard on social media because i was like i need to get my money up i need to have a legit solid business so when i start on social media if anybody tries to test me or like question me or like call me fake or whatever i have proof to back it up like look at my business look at here's i got real employees i got a real office i got like real everything you know so that's why I, that was the kind of like the route i wanted to go with and then um long story short after these past two years um i've never I haven't even announced it on my social media on my instagram or nothing but i'm actually exiting out the company i'm selling it uh, my equity and uh for multiple seven figures i don't want to give a um you know exact amount but because uh paperwork legal shit whatever but you know i'm happy about it and it's my second business actually so we forgot to uh yes yeah, my second business that i've actually sold so we actually forgot to talk about one thing that i used to do I never even, Strip. I don't even think I said that. <laughs> <laughs> you were a stripper? No, I wasn't a stripper, but um, I don't even think I ever said this on social media. What did you do? Oh, I know. Okay, go ahead. The weed. I used to uh, grow weed or whatever. Yeah. You. So I never said that on social media, but then I had to stop it because my partner was like, hey, like, if you're going to partner up with me. You don't want to be attached to that. I don't, I don't want to be attached to it, you know, so I sold that part of it. Well, make sure they know it was like after we was legal in the right yeah way. yeah no no yeah, everything was good yeah yeah, yeah. Like, i wasn't yeah. like <laughs> you i wasn't like a trapper like at my no, freaking yeah come on clean that my up. mom's house and like you know trying to sell weed like yeah the whole like facility license and <laughs> selling grams like by the baggie no, and stuff no, no, I was, no it was none of that 
it was legit so he was selling to dispensaries yeah yeah everything was legit so that's what i was doing and then uh, i sold it and then this company this e-commerce company i'm actually selling it um this one's a lot bigger multiple seven figures so i'm happy taking the money investing it starting something new and on to the next venture i actually started an education company teaching people amazon fba um wholesale so i'm excited about that um why you were you called me and i asked you why did you do that and you were talking about more purpose and it was just more uh i felt so what we did in the other company was drop shipping and there's a lot of miscellaneous like bs that you got to go through and um you know suspensions and stuff like that and you, you know you know you, you were in the business too so like you 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 we knew all the lost a friendship my store got suspended yeah i know like, like my, his store his store gets suspended so yeah, my friend we almost uh lost a friendship here whatever <laughs> so i was just like you know what like i don't want to do drop shipping no more and i want to build something legit more long term more sustainable more sustainable so that's what i felt in my heart so i was just like you know what let me just go ahead and build this uh do it the right way you know and um it's something that i feel more uh passionate about and something i could actually like market i never marketed my other company on social media one because i didn't even need to you know i had my partner that had a big following so but now I, this is something i feel good about that i feel like it's more sustainable more long term and actually going to help people build like an actual like drop shipping is just a more of a like a gig you know a side hustle you're, you're doing it for them this one you're teaching the man how to fish exactly and we're literally going out there and like teaching them and you know doing everything we can to make sure that they're successful so um i'm excited about that and uh i still do real estate too um we still do like you know some fix and flips um uh, my buddy is coming out tomorrow we're actually going to interview him tomorrow um we're buying some properties out here in las vegas just a quick you know little fix and flip on properties that we're doing and uh i'm not really so much in it i'm just funding it and you know, just tr trying to document the whole journey and money whatever, you know? money at this point. Yeah. I mean, that's what's cool about, you know, when you grow as a person and surround yourself with other business people is that money. Like what I was telling you earlier, I was like, you know, like today I, I closed two other people or whatever. I made probably like 40, 50,000, you know, I don't want to, I don't like really talking numbers, but it just comes to you after a while, you know, when you, people know you're legit and you make the money, they're like, all right, cool. Hey, like they start referring other people. So this is like another thing. I met another friend and he started bringing me opportunities. He's just like, hey, um, if you fund these deals, you know, I'll give you this much. And it just made sense. I was like, yeah, of course, especially in this real estate market, like the returns or whatever. I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, like it makes sense. So that's a blessing too, you know, surrounding yourself with other people because the money is just going to come a lot easier. It's hard for money to come when you're hanging around broke people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's more like a, they say when you're hanging around broke people, you know, that's more like a, like a, some type of like charity or what do you call it? Like a, you used to say this. Okay. I used to say it all the time. It was like a, I can't think of what you said though. It was a good one. I used to say too, but I just can't think of it right now. It'll pop up to you. Just yeah, it'll this, pop up in a bit. Just let it go. Let's, let's talk about, the things that happen as a as an effect to building your business and serving other people um you get material things you get nice things so let's talk about this watch you got the dream car i want to bring this up because i, I want to get into the the spiritual part of what happened like i remember you making a vision board with all this type of stuff and you talk about putting a time stamp on it something i learned from you recently and stuff so Let's talk about that. So you get the you get the car. What was that like? Because I remember you were you were. So you know when you're like kind of hustling, like when a lot of people were like, "Hey, who is your mentor and stuff like that?" I never really looked up to like entrepreneur mentors. I looked up more to like the rappers, like Drake, Nipsey Hussle, Rick Ross. You know what I mean? Like because we love music, so like, we would be in the car, you know, bumping Rick Ross, Nipsey Hussle, and they're just talking about hustling and like you know, getting it, but they live that, that rapper lifestyle. Rest. So that's what I want. So I was like, man, like, you know, that's what I want too. Like, I want the cars, I want the chains, all that stuff, you know? So I was like, this is how I want to get it. Um, 
so I used to, you know, write, uh, do vision boards and put like my the house I wanted, the cars, whatever, everything that I needed um, to accomplish that year. It was cool, you know, uh, getting my dream car, uh, like Audi R8. You put you put you wanted Audi, Lamborghini, and you wanted you wanted to be a millionaire by twenty five. Yeah, I wanted to be a millionaire by twenty five. Everybody that knows me from when I was way younger, I always said like. I'm gonna be a millionaire by 25. By 25, I'm gonna be a millionaire. And a week before your birthday, you sold your bank account. F- few days before few my days. birthday. Few days before, before my 25th birthday. birthday. Yeah. So I was just like, "What the heck? This is crazy!" Like, it was just crazy, like how you know how God works, and like, you know, it, it's, that's a whole different story. But, um, so you get the car. Yeah, I get the car. You know, and it was cool. I remember driving off the lot. It was always something I always wanted. I did it because just to say I did it. I didn't do it for like a flex or none of that stuff. Like I never post about it really. I never do anything like just that. Just affirmation to your own subconscious mind. I said this. this yeah, happened. this is just like, this is for me. You know, this is just like, because I said I was going to do it because a 70 year old Anthony said, hey, one day you're going to have this car. So that's why I did it, you know. And I remember walking, driving it off the lot. I paid cash for it and I was just like, driving it off the lot and i'm just like all right cool like what's next like yeah this is cool like you know it's fast like the car is fast and stuff but it didn't like push me to do like that wasn't the fulfilling piece no way i i get more fulfillment right now letting my friends drive it or my brothers because you know as you know like we could go into this after too but like letting my friends and brothers drive it and they're like freaking out and like (laughs) oh dang this is crazy boom boom like i get more fulfillment at letting seeing them have fun than myself you know what i mean like i don't even have fun with the car no more it's just like whatever it's just cool whatever you know um the same thing with like watches or whatever the reason why i got it is because one i got a deal on it and i was just knew it was like going to bring me more money it was going to manifest like i want to become that person you know to uh own all these things and it's going to come to me easier so I got it and it was for more networking, you know, and um, I, I'd go to a cigar lounge. All the, I go to cigar lounges like once once a week or twice a week sometimes. And there would be people in there, you know, with Richard Millie's, mm-hmm. uh, APs, Rolexes. So I was just like, man, I need one too because conversation, conversation starter, you know, like this watch was a conversation. I met this one guy at the cigar lounge. It was crazy. He was all like, can I see your watch? And I was like, yeah. And I showed it to him. And he's all like, "Oh, that's cool, bro. That that was my that was one of my first watches too." And this guy has like a five hundred thousand uh, dollar Richard Mill on, and uh, I was just like, "Dang, dude, that's crazy." You know what I mean? He was like, you know, late twenties, like twenty eight, twenty nine, and I was just like, "Man, dude, that's cool," you know. And we exchanged numbers. We talked to him. I he gave me a lot of advice. He sold his company for like nine figures, and I was just like, "Dang, dude, that's crazy." Like, and it's just a conversation starter, you know, and. Yeah. um just for networking too you know it's pretty cool started the conversation with some disrespectful numbers <laughs> yeah some disrespectful numbers just just shitting on me i was like cool bro it's like cool though. yesterday i actually just found out that it glows in the dark mm-hmm. i was for some reason i was like in the dark room and i saw it glowing and i was like what the heck my watch glows so i found out it glows in the dark He's like yes yeah, so i was in the dark web dark room <laughs> <laughs> i know so so that's pretty cool so you get the things the things kind of like became a symbol of what you want to become yeah and it always is re- just to bring more like yeah i went to turks and caicos um last week or two weeks ago and we were on a yacht you know it's just like having that feeling of like like luxury you know it's whatever. like staining your spirit so you can yeah, attract more to attract more of it you know what i mean not because i'm like looking for it but it's just like this is like what i want you know i want a private jet is that selfish i don't know like i don't know i just want it because for my reasons like hey when i have all my kids and my wife i want to travel and i know i want to travel a lot so what's better you know i want a private jet have my family in there and you know go travel the world and show my kids you know what the world has to offer so that's not selfish at all yeah i know so man it's funny because we're jumping around so much i don't even think i said like yeah. finish my story about like uh where i come from or anything like that my family and i mean we're like kind of like 
that well i was gonna get into that with like um i think it's important for people to know that there's business yes there's um money yes there's life experiences but like this stuff kind of really comes into play like the fun is when you know how your mind works and the the spiritual side of yourself um and you realize that you're manifesting this whole life. You're speaking, feeling, thinking stuff into existence. Bro, you've seen it from I the beginning. I saw it. Bro, we both saw each other. A lot of the stuff that I said happened. A lot of stuff you said happened. We were supposed to go to Bali together. I don't even know if you even mentioned it right here. The I sang about Bali, Bali in a song. Yeah, I know. So that's song. what's great. I was supposed to. I live there We now. were supposed to go to Bali. And then you just left me. No, I called you. I said, you want to move to Bali? You said, I'm down. And then next thing you know, like. The whole thing with your partner came up, be like, my goal, get rich over and so and so, you're yeah. gonna take off. You, I moved to Vegas right when you moved to Bali. Right. So, um, but you should take this time to go back to before I even met you or anything, where your mom comes from, um, your ethnicity, your dream, your the initial dream you told me in the personal development section, holding that Think and Grow Rich book, and you were like, This is my dream. I don't talk about it often, but I want to dream big and yeah so you should talk about where you came from what your big dream was that you told me at that point and the triggering factor that made you be like i'm getting rich with your sister yeah so i'm half uh my mom she's from el salvador my dad he's guatemalan and um they met when they were in, in la when they you know they crossed the border went to la they met over there so i'm half and half um but then they got a divorce when i was when yeah i was nine years old they got a divorce so i kind of pretty much grew up with my mom talked to my dad every once in a while you know once or twice a year or whatever since then but um i grew up in a household where you know traditional hispanic where it was like all my brothers I, there's like seven of us i'm the youngest so everybody was doing construction you know like that's just like your typical hispanic like you know household was just like if the brothers ain't going to school and they're not going to college they're just going to go do construction so uh all my brothers were doing construction nobody's really doing nothing my mom's mindset is scarce you know over all the time hey mom can i get this we have no money oh we have no money oh how am i going to pay the bills how am i going to my whole life so it was just like i was just my like myself uh conscious was just like dang like life is hard you know your subconscious because, believed that yeah i believed it because i was just like that's what i grew up on like that's what i heard everybody say and then um i don't know man i i, I feel like it's just like i think when it started when i was younger like it might sound crazy but like don't you feel like sometimes like maybe you're just like chosen like yeah. i think we talked about it earlier where i was just like sometimes it's just chosen bro like why isn't the regular guy like bobby or R richie over there um thinking like this. thinking like this like thinking like i need to uh do better in life or i need to get out the mud i need to whatever you know i think it's just i don't know what clicked just always in my what's crazy is that it might be because when i was a kid i used to tell my mom all the time like Oh yeah, when I'm rich, I'm gonna get a Lamborghini. I'm gonna get you a mansion. Like I used to say this stuff, not knowing what money was. Yeah. I didn't know you needed to. I didn't know what rich meant. I didn't know you needed a lot of money to buy a Lamborghini. I was so into Fast and Furious, and I used to love cars. And I was just like, yeah, I want a Lamborghini. I didn't know what that meant. I just like, I just knew it was a cool car, and that's what I wanted. So growing up, I was always like, man, mom, like when I'm rich, I'm a, you know, I'm gonna get a Lamborghini. I'm gonna get a mansion. I'm gonna do this. So I think subconsciously, I was like, since a kid, programming, like, just telling myself, and since you're a kid, you believe it, because mm -hmm. you don't have nobody, like, you know, when you're four or five, you kind of just, like, you have, you don't listen to the outside, you know, you're just mm -hmm. kind of, like, freely thinking. Your theta is, like, absorbed, yeah, yeah. So, and then that happened, then, you know, I think when you get older, you start to kind of hang around friends, and start to understand more so that's where it kind of gets diluted but then somehow it just came back and i was like just like school work yeah that. all that stuff you know what i mean and uh i remember one time uh my sister came in my room and she was crying she probably went through a breakup or something i don't know why she was crying but that killed me like just seeing her like super upset 
and she was just like can i get uh gas money to it was like something small like ten dollars you were telling me she asked for 10 bucks mm -hmm. she was like can i get 10 bucks i need to go like put gas and i just need to go for a drive and she's like devastated and i'm just like i'm watching a drake video this guy is freaking has women and cars and everything like in his video right living the rapper lifestyle so i'm looking at that she comes in and she tells me like I can't like please like I need to go drive I just and I'm like why what's wrong she's like just please like she's not telling me so she, you know probably some boy drama I don't know um and then I look I'm like I, I have no money like I don't have nothing then when I said that like just I just remember my mom always saying that and then something clicked in my head bro that that day I'm looking at Drake and I'm like bro like why do they get to live like this and we're over here struggling. It just didn't make sense to me. I'm like, there's got to be a better way. And then since that day, I was always like, I don't know what it is, how it is. If I got to, I don't know what business is. I don't know, do I got to go get a business license? I didn't know anything about business. I was just like, all I knew was I'm going to go out there and I'm going to be able to provide for my family. Mm -hmm. And be able to make sure I have those $10 to give her or, you know, to pay for this if my mom needs money. So after that i was just kind of just learning you know just looking on youtube and just uh just trying to find a better way really you know mm -hmm. but that moment is literally where something clicked mm -hmm. where i was just like dang there's i got there's got to be a better way mm -hmm. you know what i mean i was like okay i can't rap i was like <laughs> i was like you, i'm not a I, I remember you were like maybe i could sign you to my label you were like trying to make up <laughs> yeah, a label yeah. so i was just like, like i'll make a label yeah yeah so i was like okay i can't rap and I remember I was like, okay, let me download this Fruity Loops or whatever. What do you call it? Fruity? Is it Fruity Loops? The beat maker. Fruity well, yeah, the beat, whatever. Like, I was like, all right, this shit is ass. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, that's out like, the window. Yeah. You're like, I have no rhythm, so Yeah, yeah I have no rhythm. Throw that out the window. <laughs> all right, cool. So I was like, what else is it? I was like, all right, I'm going to make a record label. Yeah. I was like, you're trying to sign all the homies. I was like, because all of my friends rap. Yeah. They all my friends make yeah, you music. You tried 360 deal? Yeah, I was like, yeah, 360 deal? I got you right now. Five bands. I got you. I don't even have money to my name. And you know, the homies, they're like, what? Five Gs? Hell yeah. Like, you know, like, everybody knows Elijah. He was down. He was like, what? <laughs> yeah, sign me. You know what I mean? I'm over here trying to put a place together. I'm like, already trying to make some money. So, yeah. So I was like, okay, that's out the window. I don't know anything about the music label. So I was just like, you know what, let me, there's a bunch of little stuff that I tried, you know, that a lot of trial and error before I got to e-commerce, but, um, but also like you learn kind of how your brain worked. Like when you were like, you're writing a book, you're like, my brain, I can't, I couldn't sit there and write a book or I couldn't write a song. Or I couldn't yeah, sing you, a song. You'd be like, but I could think business. That's like, your mind was like, I can make businesses. Like you got to know like your strengths, you know yeah. what I mean? Like you can't just go in being like. I know I can't write. Like, I remember when you were writing a bo the book, and I was like, dang, dude, that's good. Like, I can't even write, like, even to this day, bro, like, I can't write an email. The way you, I write an email is, like, how I text. My, my girl has to do all my emails, like, like even checking the flight email to, yeah. to get to you, to fly over you today, I was like, what the, I was confused, like. <laughs> yeah, so that's how I am, too. Like, I'm just like, man, I can, you know what, I can't write. I can, I can barely spell. There ain't no way I'm going to fucking write a book yeah so i was like okay that's out the window too so i was just like all right you know what i just got to figure out a lot and then i started hearing about this whole you're like make I'm, money online e-commerce like you know I'm blind and deaf i just <laughs> yeah, I'm lucky it was tough bro it was like it was, it was hard out here for a pimp so i was just like you know what i don't know man you know you just go through a bunch of stuff and until something hits yeah then you find your strengths then you're just like all right, cool. You know what? I started making some money with this. All right, cool. Maybe I, this is it right here. Maybe I could take this all the way, you know? Then you kind of just pivot as you go, you know? You kind of just learn. It's, it's a journey. So, El Salvador, you, you you decided from your sister's situation, you're like, I got to get rich to be able to provide for my family. Yeah. You're reading Think and Grow Rich type stuff, understand the power of imagination, come to reality. Speak. I read The Secret. The Secret. The Secret changed my life, bro. And that made you start dreaming big and you that wanted made to be me the go savior. Crazy of what like i'm talking about the end goal like after your 30 kids you want and <laughs> oh okay oh, okay yeah so first real quick the the book the secret changed my life i, I think you were probably reading the secret yeah both of our lives so you know 
like this is a dream right here we're on the same frequency yeah. in some space and like we we know that now before yeah. like the secret I, I so the amazing. secret you know my mindset back in the day you know like hanging out with my friends like we used to just smoke weed and drink and looking for the next turn up you know the next party like there was just like it was a whole different lifestyle so pretty much uh when i read the secret i was just kind of confirmed a lot of my beliefs i was like wait what well, you could manifest you could I could like kind of manifest whatever I want, you know, and man, dude, I went through a spiritual trip. <laughs> we both did. <laughs> but yours was a crazy one. Me, I was just like telling my friends and family, I was passing it out to everybody like, yo, you got to read this. Like you can manifest shit. Like this manifestation shit is it's the one I'm trying to tell you. Like this dude was selling spirituality at the door. Like, yeah, dude, I was this. trying to, yeah, I was trying to sell it like to all my friends and my friends like, what the fuck? So I was just like, man, dude, but real quick, you want to tell uh, your story real quick, your spiritual trip when Although you, when you woke me. up? But yeah, sure I will. <laughs> um, Okay, so the church one, the church one, the church one's Anthony's favorite. <laughs> yeah. There's that about me in that one song at the end, like that beat. You're like, you're in the studio. You're like, <laughs> right there, <laughs> your favorite moments. Yeah. All right, so okay, so I don't know what happened. I had a cute little Latina girlfriend at the time when I was living in Santa Clarita. I was working at Valsurf Skate Shop, and I also had my own clothing brand in there, and I was a sponsored skateboarder, so I was just literally getting paid to, like, hang out, get free skateboards, free clothes, and make double income, just All my friends, we was all cool and tight, hanging out at Denny's every day, and then my mom bought a house in Palmdale, so I, I shifted environments, and I did not like Palmdale, and I, like, got depressed for the first time, I was like, this is really weird. Because it's a different environment. Palmdale is more like ratchet. And then Santa Clarita was more like, yeah, you know, uh, a lot of just like, you know, white people and yeah. clean and yeah. safety. Yeah, cutter and yeah. They're all, yeah. So although my mom, she did well, she moved over by the mall. She's in a better area. It just, the, the mindset of the people around me, I couldn't make friends. I was like, you know, like it was just really different. And I was getting depressed and I was like, this is weird. So I was, like, looking on ways to, like, get happy. And I was, like, low-key embarrassed. Like, how do you be happy? Like, you know, how do you get rich? How do you, you know? So, and then, like, I think someone, something popped up about discover your spiritual nature or something. And, like, a Bob Proctor video came up. If anyone doesn't know who Bob Proctor is, look up who Bob Proctor is. That's the big homie. That's the big homie. Keep Bob Proctor, the stuff I learned from him is the reason that I have a monkey. I live in a different country. I'm like, all my little childhood dreams, like... You're the black uh, Bob Proctor. I'm, I'm the black you. Bob Proctor. Yeah. Hey, no, but... <laughs> Keep it so brief. Bob Proctor was... He was in the documentary The Secret, uh, but that was later on in his career. He teaches the science of your subconscious mind and your paradigms and your programming that's keeping you unconsciously in the same karmic loops of what keeps manifesting in your life. And if you change them, which are your beliefs, your habits, your perspective, your perception your life will mold to your new beliefs, thoughts, and actions, which will allow you to manifest what you program yourself with, not media or your family or friends. So, um, anyways, so what were we talking about? We were talking about, oh, my spirit's awakening. So, I'm learning all this. And he's teaching about the subconscious mind. I'm doing these affirmations on my window saying I'm abundant, wealthy, you know, life is good. I feel good. And it starts working. Like, I'm, like, hypnotizing myself. I'm, like, happy and stuff. And, like, all these crazy things start happening. Like, um, I helped this girl put on an event for Bella Thorne at the time. And, like, I stayed at this guy Mod's son's house, which was her old uh, boyfriend. And, like, the universe was, like, playing with me because I was acting happy. It was, like, act as if. And I was, like, really, I started becoming really, like, outgoing and happy. And this dude was on the same vibe. And all these cool things. I started hosting shows and Everything that I was, like, writing on my mirror was coming true. So I'm, like, tripping out. I'm, like, what the heck? So, you know, you want to go tell your friends. So I was telling my homies, like, bro, you got to, like, write down your dreams. Like, clean up your room. What is this, bro? Like, you got to have stuff. Of, you know, like, come on. Let's make you a vision board. They're looking at me like I'm crazy. Like They're, like, after this hit, hold up. Yeah, they're, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're like, <laughs> what? You know? So I'm, like, no, nah, bro. Like, your mind could do anything. Like, I just sound like probably, like, some wacko dude, right? Yeah. So then my my family friend, 
I call him Uncle Jason. He he has like a family church in his house. He had a nice house and, and everybody would come and they would preach, you know, but with no disrespect, like I love everybody like sometimes. <laughs> what? Sometimes I would see that since I was a child, the peop- certain people have been praying for the same things since I was four, you know? And like, oh, like, and a lot of things in like African-American like culture, and like not everybody, but there'll be some like, Oh, when God say it's my turn or it's not in the cards for me, like whatever God. And I always thought God gave you your mind, your heart, your words, your will, your intent to make what you want in life. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm here today because I set an intention to fly to Vegas and be here. I made this and God did all the back end stuff like and I ended up on the back end on the back end. You got to have to get paid in the back (laughs) end. No, but (laughs) so I'm learning this. I go to the family church. (laughs) And they're talking about something I forget, but I found somewhere in the Bible. I think it was. I I don't I don't know everything about the Bible. I'm, I'm not Christian anymore. I grew up Christian, but you know I just believe more of a connection with God. But it was like a verse. I think it was like Habakkuk two two talking about be transformed by the renewal of the mind. I think. So I literally stood up at church. <laughs> and I literally was like, "Give me the marker." I like <laughs> I like I'm preaching today. <laughs> like go oh let me preach let me talk i got something to say so i'm like all hype thinking like i'm about to just wake up everybody up today we all about to get this off my chest yeah i'm like hold on like we all (laughs) about to discover something so i draw this circle that bob proctor also draws it's like this circle with a line through it and it talks about the conscious mind which are their thoughts you can think i'm so you pretty much just ripped off bob Bob practice i did i did i just stole his stuff (laughs) he stole it from napoleon hill and earl nightingale and all those guys so i'm just I'm trying to pass the torch. Yeah. So I literally, here I am in church, you know what I'm saying, where we don't really talk about energy and metaphysics, you know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about? So I'm drawing this circle, and I'm like, all right, so here's the problem. It's right here in our subconscious. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, if we're fat, if we're tired, if we're upset, if something's not happening, it's because we got this subconscious thing right. So I'm essentially telling everybody, everything you're thinking is just wrong <laughs> so you need to change your thoughts and your beliefs this is what i'm working on and i'm over here like i'm about to have a lamborghini by the end of the year i'm about to do this everybody in the background amen <laughs> amen and i'm just sitting here going in thinking like Praise in my Lord. brain i'm thinking like i'm giving my family and friends the tools like i've been missing this like why did nobody tell me why didn't nobody tell me my mind was like attracting so why didn't nobody tell me i was a vibrational frequential magnet you know yeah. so i'm here screaming this shit sounding like yeah. einstein probably you know <laughs> and everybody's just like okay Sounds i remember crazy. i was young you know yeah. like they're like yeah i believed like this and stuff too you know so then i, I like another tweaker I, yeah i'm like I'm, yeah i'm probably sounding crazy so so i got a few claps and crickets you know but you know so now i look back and I'm laughing because I didn't know yet that. But didn't you tell him like? Didn't you have them all sign like, uh, something where it was like, oh, like what do you need? Like I'm gonna have money by next year. So <laughs> yeah. tell him that. I was right telling everybody, what's your dream? What's your goal? What do you want? I'm buying it for you. For he you. had everybody at church freaking. <laughs> I need a car next year. He's like, I got you. I'm over here being Oprah. Like, yeah, he was on his this. Oprah shit. And then I'm like, we're going to all do vision board. I'm like, in my head, I'm thinking like, oh, I found a way to get anyone anything they want, you know? So why yeah. wouldn't you want to share that? Yeah. You know how that goes? Yeah, yeah. Because you think like, oh, I'm about to manifest this anyway. So let you, me just you, you might, help you, both. Right. So you're, 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 you're doing that, but you don't realize like 98% of the world is conditioned to go against themselves, to think mm-hmm. small, to eat poorly, to feel poorly about themselves, to not use their energy and focus on things that are going to be beneficial to themselves and others around them. Um, they're consumers, not necessarily creators. Most people don't even believe they're creative. So how they yeah. get you back up yet? Like, Hey, yo, you remember that one time? <laughs> I don't think it's <laughs> you can get me a car. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I just, somebody's like, yo, so uh, <laughs> yeah, down bad right now. <laughs> no, I think everybody just kind of looked at me as like, are you giving the, out loans? The little, the little nephew, the little <laughs> nephew that like, Oh, he's like a dreamer, and my mom yeah. was really big on like she wouldn't let nobody like. Cut oh, my he's just hitting off, the pookie. So nobody, <laughs> nobody would ever say nothing weird, but yeah, no, but yeah, we went through like a little spiritual thing where we was like tripping, trying to think we're going to wake up the world, you know? Yeah. yeah. So same, same here. Like, I don't think everybody goes through that. I think it's just funny that we went through it. Unless everybody else does, I don't. know. I think a lot of people get they go. I've through never that heard. Phase it. Where I've never like, heard oh, anybody like say it. Wake everybody up, then they find out my everyone has different beliefs. But have you met anybody else that had like a crazy spiritual trip? 
when they woke up. Like I, I know I had one. I was, I was tripping. But when I heard George, I was like, "Whoa, you're really tripping, bro!" Because you went in front of church. I didn't, sp- I didn't sleep for two weeks because like, I was feeling so paranoid, like, huh? Good. No, I was feeling up. No, I was feeling up too. I remember just being like, "What?" Like, I couldn't like. I was so excited. I was like, "Man, I gotta share this." Like, I gotta tell my mom. I gotta tell everybody, and everybody just like, "No, that's the." That's, that's the, the devil. devil. Everybody was telling me that's the devil. Or see that sign? Like yeah. I was like, like in Bob Park did one of his videos. There was like a Buddha sign in the bottom, and like my uncle walked in my room and I was watching it, yeah. <laughs> and it scared me because what happened was, he was like, "You have to change your inner narrative. You have to be the star of your own movie and start changing the narrative." So if you heard money is scarce or opportunities are scarce or oh opportunities are once in a lifetime, they're everywhere. You just have to align with it. So there, he gave me like he gave you like this money affirmation, this money mantra to recondition your subconscious with, your your deep emotional mind, um, and it was like money comes to me through in- increasing quantities, uh, through multiple sources on a continuous basis, and it was like this video with this money falling out the sky, and I was I watching that, crazy chanting, I was like chanting that to myself, putting on my mirror. So my uncle walks in, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's chilling. We usually just, he hops in, we play some video games. Yeah. He's like, what's this? Why, why, what's this old white dude talking about? And I'm just like, oh, no, it's just, and I realized in that moment, like, I'm about to sound crazy, you yeah. know? And then he's just like, what's that symbol? He's like, be careful, because, like, cause some of that stuff, you know, the devil and yeah. stuff, like, and then I started, I had, like, a conniption within myself, because I was like, oh, this, oh, damn, like, this white dude. I got God. This, this, yeah, I'm like, this white dude, you got me over here chanting about money, making money, my God. I'm like, oh, no. Like, you know, I'm all freaking out and yeah. shit. So I'm thinking I do something wrong, like, spiritual family thinking. But like, that's oh, the like, thing the is, like, or, with a lot of Hispanic and, you know, black uh, families is, like, you, you don't really, like, grow up like, oh, you could, you know, to believe in or just, like, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know if, like, you could speak for you know the uh, black families, but like for Hispanic is like to try to thrive is like almost looked down upon. Money, like I remember talking about like I I want more money, I want more money, and my mom would be like, and my sisters they used to sit me down like that's the devil, like money's evil, this and that. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. It's like a it's a token. <coughs> I remember watching Wolf of Wall Street. I'm like fun tokens. That's why I always call it fun that's tokens. Good. I'm like, no, it's just a tool. It's like. I need it so I could do what I want in life. I could be free. I can create. I was like, why do you guys want to work nine to fives? I used to tell everybody like, it's like there's nothing wrong with the nine to five, but it's just crazy to me that you got to work in nine to five until you're 65. And then... And then you get your life. And then you get... You don't even get your life because your life's pretty much almost over. Like, let's say you live until like you're 90 or something. And you got vegan. 25 years. You know what I mean? But at that time, you're already old and you don't have the energy like you did like now. Like, why would I work until I'm 65 then go to like Turks and Caicos, Europe and stuff like that? I'm freaking 26, 27 and I'm I'm traveling and I got the energy now, you know? I want to go see, you know, European girls now. Yeah. <laughs> not, not when I'm 65. Not with Viagra. <laughs> yeah, not with Viagra. Like, what? That's crazy. So it's just like, you Rob know. Vegan, you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like, you know, uh, Drake says this one of, quote, he says, fuck being rich when I'm 40. I'm trying to make it now. Mm-hmm. And he tells Jay-Z, he says, fuck you and your time difference. That's some, one thing, too, that was pretty crazy uh, I wanted to touch about is because, like, a lot of the youngins out there, they're going to try to go out there and get it. They're going to tr- they're going to get taken advantage of. When you go network and talk to these older guys, because it's, <clears throat> it's a lot harder to meet younger people um, that are successful, you'll be able to meet a lot older people because they've been through the trial and error. But they're going to look at you as like as fish, you know, like they're a shark. Like all these guys are sharks. So that's one thing about me that I would like get advice on is when you talk to these guys, like get it all in writing contracts make sure everything's expectations are met because all these guys are just sharks at the end of the day like that's a, like i don't know it's just, a lot of them are sharks they don't really care they're just like hey they see you as a as a young guy and they're just like trying to take opportunity like take the opportunity away they're just like you know what like <laughs> screw it um you know there's been times where 
there was guys that were older than me and I'm like, I should have made maybe 30, 40,000 on a real estate deal. But because I was young and he knew I didn't know, he just gave me five or 10, you know, mm -hmm. but it's still something to me. I'm still <laughs> blessed about it. I'm still thankful. But it was like, because of those things, because I was young and I didn't know, you know they took the advantage. End. So now, yeah, now that I know about the back end, I'm like, oh, okay, this guy fucked me over. Oh, okay, this guy right here fucked me over on purpose right here. Now that I'm older and I experience more in business, <clears throat> um, I'm able to see all that stuff, you know? So that's one thing for sure that, you know, all these guys are sharks. Uh, be careful, uh, especially for <clears throat> partnerships and uh, just you know they're always looking out for you and uh one thing that i noticed too that i wanted to speak about about entrepreneurship is that what i noticed is that uh a lot of these entrepreneurs that i've came across like <clears throat> i don't want to say all of them but a lot of them are kind of like uh i don't want to say pussies but like they come from a different background where they never like been punched in the face before or like I, i've been scammed uh from some people like thirty five thousand, thirty thousand. you know you have too right i know who this is you know who it is um and like what a lot of people don't know is like the way i see it is that like, okay <clears throat> if i'm in palmdale and they scammed like somebody that I know from Palm, like you know, or LA, or just whatever, just whatever in general. You're about to say, don't incriminate yourself. I'll yeah, yeah, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> I'm just saying, that. like, like people, like people die for five thousand dollars. You know what I mean? And people are out here scamming like, like it's nothing. And that's because they never been like punched in the face before. They never been like, you know what I mean? They never had that that confrontation before. Mm -hmm. So they think it's okay. <laughs> Like, for me, one thing I always tell my partners, too, like, there's been a conversation with, like, some of my partners where I was, like, I could have made millions of dollars, and I left <laughs> millions of dollars on the table because, like, they know I, I don't give a crap about the money. Like, I'm, I'm loyal first, respectful, and, like, the friendship is worth a lot more than millions of dollars, and, um, <clears throat> like... I don't know. That's that's something about me where it's like it's never about the money for me no more because I'm out that survival mode. You know what I mean? I made it enough money where if worst case scenario, you know, like none of my businesses ever succeed and I become like some type of bum or something. As long as I invest my money right now, I'll be good for the rest of my life, you know, but um, it's never been about the money and it's always been about like just integrity and always like the friendship with the person. You know, like I said, I've been pretty much robbed, like almost not robbed, but like just let go of millions of dollars because of friendships and just because of like the, <clears throat> what's the word I'm looking for? I don't even know what the word I'm looking for, but just to circle back around is like a lot of these guys that, you know, they're out there scamming on social media. It sucks because I felt it. You felt it. And for somebody that, like, I already had money, right? Like, not a lot, but I was doing well for myself. So it didn't hit me as hard. I was just like, all right, screw that dude. Like, when I see him, I see him, and that's it. But there's other people out there that that 35000 is probably all they have. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they probably screwed up their whole life scamming them from that 35000 mm -hmm. And you know coming from certain places like people like get hurt from that you know mm -hmm. and a lot of these people that that i met is like that's one thing i had to learn too um jumping around that's something i had to learn too is just like one thing my mom tells me is like i gotta calm down and i gotta act as a man of uh of success and like carry Bless. myself a certain way you know which i'm learning <laughs> Like, um, you know, even though I'm like, you know, multimillionaire or whatever, I was in Barcelona uh, for my birthday a few, uh, like a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, I'm still out here like I beat some dude up, whatever. But 
my mom and my dad they're just like bro like why are you doing that you know like my dad heard about it whatever they're just like you gotta carry yourself and i'm just like all right whatever like but i'm still learning from it you know um everybody's in a different journey and different time period but i don't know dude it's all to go back to like people that's that scam they mess with sometimes they mess with the wrong person or they scam the wrong person and they could get hurt you know and that's something that i learned i know that's why i'm always if somebody's mad at me or upset with me i'd rather just refund them if a client or a student's upset with me i'm just going to refund them because i'm like i know how that goes to get scammed and i know like not to mess with nobody because at the end of the day like people are like you know like you're a man first before like businessman and all that stuff you know so <clears throat> that's one thing that i see like on social media that's just freaking crazy that all the scamming that's going on probably took like a crazy turn right now but yeah. <laughs> but it's something that needs to be talked about because there's a lot of people out there that are doing it mm -hmm. and they're doing it like they don't care right and um i've been a lot around a lot of wise men since i was really young in my life and one thing that really makes you rich or wealthy is your integrity how you got to the money um and like the reputation the reputation you leave for yourself in, in other people's mouths because like that the energy does come back and depending on how you got it or you know what i'm saying it's, it's almost not worth having the face card of someone who is not integral or takes the the money from other people's in their kids mouths and not have no intention of actually providing a service and um since i was a child i always thought business was supposed to be hey you have a gift i have a gift that god gave me and we can come together and serve other people and it's actually fun and fulfilling to do that i don't know where we got as society where it's like i can't trust you i can't trust you put it in the writing this and that like scam this and that like it, it's kind of crazy i think we got a lot of different mindsets over here in the West. I live in the East and it is not like that at all. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, you do got to protect yourself. And I think that it'd be nice if people could just operate with integrity because yeah. you always want to be a person people feel comfortable and safe and like your word means something. Because it comes back, we understand karma too, you know, and a lot of these people don't. And I, I want to clarify something too. It's funny is, um, you know, I'm not going around like when I was talking about the Barcelona thing when I beat up. I don't even think I told you that, right? Did I tell you that? Story? No, you were just out here flexing that you talking people. <laughs> I don't know. I just quiet. No, so what happened, long story short, I was in mind. Barcelona and some dude, like, just backstory so people don't think I'm just out here crazy. You're just out here socking fool. No, That's no, no, no. Today. Some dude, like, he bumped into me and he was like some, uh, some Moroccan dude. He was just like, oh, I'll kill you, whatever. Like, and I was like, what? And, you know, I'm over your turn. I'm drunk. And I'm like, so I just had to, you know, let him know what the what the deal was. And but the thing is that like when I was a kid, that's where kinda like where where I come from, you know what I mean? Like somebody presses you like that, somebody like you're a man first. You gotta go in like in high school we were in rumbles, you know, like mm. even with you know, with this guy right here, right across from us right here, like we've been in rumbles where it was like seven on seven. You was putting in work too? Yeah, yeah. Oh my so like God. you know what i mean like in high school where it was like eight on eight type stuff you know what i mean so it's like that's the type of stuff like that's why i never judge nobody because people are at their different pace and then they come some people come from here and some people start from here mm -hmm. you know somebody some people come from like a good family or like middle class and then they go from there but some people come from the bottom bottom so they're still learning, mm -hmm. you know? So I feel like that's how I am. I'm still learning as a a man and as a uh, be more professional and, like, all that stuff, you know? And uh, the reason why I bring this all this stuff up is because, you know, a good friend of ours, Rich, um, we had a good conversation, you know, every Sunday we try to have a, you know, accountability call and, you know, talk about some stuff about the Bible and we read a scripture and, you know, just keep each other accountable and we're talking about, hey, we want to put out content, but I want to be real and be vulnerable. You know what I mean? I don't want to come out and be like, it, it, it sucks because like, I, w I want to be this guy where it's like, oh, the super professional and um, hey, this and that, whatever. But then at the same time, I want to be real because that's what's going to bring the people in. Like, 
they're gonna feel it you know if i don't talk to that person that kid that that came from a different background that's fine right. i'm talking to the people that came from where i you know started from where i came from and started with nothing and you know they can relate to me they can relate to those stories where they're just like man as a kid you you did this and this and this but it's possible to change as a person you know who i was like he could attest to it where 10 years ago the person i was 10 years ago you would you would look at me right now people you wouldn't even be able to recognize me or be like oh this guy right here like oh what that's anthony like what the heck how you know what i mean so even five years ago you know you change all the time so in five years from now when i'm like 32 or whatever the case is 31 32 different I'm going to be a hundred percent different. I'm probably not going to be who I am. I'm not going to be who I am right now. Right. I might be freaking some type of preppy dude or something. I don't know. I, I, I want to congratulate you or give you your props and respect um, from man to man in front of people because a lot of men don't talk about this, but vulnerability has been a big one for this guy. <laughs> like one time we flew our girls out to Miami to Miami on some wholesome shit <laughs> and we we it was my girl's birthday and he was nice enough to get us a really nice penthouse and we all just hung out rode birds through the street and just saw the vibes i had never seen um a more tropical place like that and my girl is a self-transformational um life coach for people like emotional healing deep trauma um spirituality and stuff like that so so she's all that's her her mind's always working like that so we were sitting down eating and she was telling anthony like hey like you know sometimes you don't always have to be this big hard guy you can like open up and be vulnerable it actually makes you more powerful as a man you know like you can like tell your friends like i love you you can smile more you can like you can express what's hurting you and he's just like, oh no like you can tell he's all <laughs> uncomfortable and i will always tell him like hey like it's okay i remember you were like i love you bro and i was just yeah like, i was like i love you bro my, my girl was like tell him it back and he was like oh it like hurt him it like hurt this dude and i was just like it's okay bro like you can cry no, <laughs> like, you can cry. no but i i really i really commend you for that because this dude had a horrible time being vulnerable and a horrible time admitting when you're wrong it just never it's like like if you guys are going through something you need you want to communicate with somebody you guys both need to admit, okay this is where I, I messed up this is where i fucked up okay cool but this is good no no because you like he could never say something with him or i'm hurt here or this happened but ne like hearing you say like you want to be more vulnerable or you want to i think that's growth and i think a lot of guys walk around like man up hold all your shit in deal with your shit on yourself but that's not even emotionally healthy yeah and like, i think that's just like growing up like as like boys like you know like hispanic family or even black family where it was just like it's looked down upon like what like what do you mean you're sad like you assist like me. yeah like if i if i if i was crying or something like that they'll, my brothers would be like what like pussy like what the fuck like why are you crying you know what i mean they'll beat me up or some shit so like you know the reason the, another reason too why i wanted to like talk like how i'm talking and be real with the people is because maybe in five years from now i'm not the person i'm not going to be the person i am but they're going to see the growth you know i wish i was filming when i was 17 18 year old 18 years old because then they'll see the asshole that i was back then and then they'll be like wow this guy grew mm -hmm. from then you know so it sucks that i don't have that film that footage from back in the day because then they could have seen they could have seen who i became now but it's part of my growth you know what i mean i don't want to shy away from like who i am and like who i am at this moment so five years from now when i'm still filming content they could see the growth they could be yeah. like somebody could look back five years from now you know and it's going to be 2030 right the year 2030 and they could look back at 2022 and be like damn this guy anthony was like this or damn he was like whatever and who knows but at that time i'm gonna be worth billion dollars or something and speak it up they're gonna be like dang that's crazy you know what i mean billion passive annually yeah, passive um on a monday so uh fired. dang what, what were you just going off on keep the train of thought going you were just finishing up talking about what were you just talking about that's a tough one he's like nothing important <laughs> <laughs> after all that oh just like uh no the billionaire but just being like the growth in a few years from now 
they're gonna be able to see like who i was now mm-hmm. and in five years from now three years from now they're gonna be like oh look at the growth you know what i mean mm-hmm. you could go to like grant cardone's uh youtube and see him years ago the way he looked and stuff like that you know oh that's and awesome i can appreciate thing. that i'm like dang that's crazy like look who he was back then but look at the content he's producing now look who he became now Mm-hmm. just throw a picture of you and your old truck and stuff up here if we can find it i'll send you, you, you have one. you have one maybe i'll send it to your editor if not then i don't know i'm just talking but uh yeah i wanted to like tell you that from my perspective there's like a fine line between being professional and just being authentically yourself and when you're authentically yourself you're going to draw in the people who are in alignment with you and those are going to be people you want to serve the people relate to you you know what i'm saying like um imagine if some of the people that you like like uh i know you you resonate with some of the stuff gary v said so imagine if he was i have to be professional being like a suit all the time and it wouldn't be so relatable if he didn't like kind of cuss and just be like Mm -hmm. oh whatever that's kind of more your style you know so it's just like people will be able to relate to you they'll be magnetic to you and at the end of the day when everybody takes their clothes off and takes their costume because your clothing is just a costume if you're wearing a suit you're trying to say i'm a businessman if you're wearing a police officer outfit you're just trying to put a symbol of what you're trying to be when you take those off nobody's professional and perfect all the time you know what i'm saying so i think it's cool that you're this way but also when you get on the phone you're t- you're talking straight there's there's like no uh you, if you, you're just being transparent that's professional but still being a big you so i think that you know who you are as a person it's beautiful and stay that way because especially for the, the latino community my girl's latina she's also from el salvador and uh from america in america i know that the household conditioning could be a little bit more restrictive and stuff mm-hmm. so like imagine that young anthony that doesn't maybe speak perfectly or, or speak perfect english or may have a complex in his head like dang i'm not perfect like them though like can i get down with these guys in these fields can i whatever and then you're still able to pull up and be you and just be like i'm tatted up i'm having Resonate fun i'm joking you know like it don't, business don't always got to be serious like or whatever yeah um so but that person getting being able to see like this person i could be rich and still have a personality yeah. i could be rich and still have an opinion or i can have like the kind of money and say what I want to say without caring like oh is some endorsement deal gonna leave me I can actually be myself because what's the point of getting rich if you can't be you and yeah, be free that's true you, you now now you got money and stuff but you got endorsement I can't say this on YouTube let me not cuss like this or I gotta dress like this you might as well go to a private school where they tell you what to dress say and think and eat might as well go to yeah for real you played yourself time. you got rich to, to <laughs> jump in the, into a slavery <laughs> you yeah. slave yourself you just, you just jump into slavery but you put the work in to jump in there I know right that's backward great. that's Hustling true backward that's move facts. to Bali it's yeah. free everything you're a free person there yeah no huh? <laughs> facts so yeah that's yeah. about it or what I think so, man. We we have uh, been talking for like an hour and a half, so we don't want to bore these guys. So <laughs> in the future, um, let's go to let's just do a third thirty. Thirty seems like a, a monumental mark that people put in their lives. Um, thirty, what's life looking for you? Look looking like for you? I know you want kids. How many you want? Like what what does life look? I for want you? ten kids. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> It's funny, I don't want to say this on camera, but uh, yeah, I want 10 kids, so, um, you know, looking for that, uh, my girl that's, that's ready for these uh, 10 kids. Live your life in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Live your life in a hospital bed. Birth, Give sex birth. in a hospital bed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Back to pregnancy. Yeah, I want a lot of kids, you know, so um, that's for sure. Any Any girl that wants to that wants to be with me she's got to understand that network by any means i'm gonna get these 10 kids <laughs> <laughs> whatever it takes so 10 kids are you where are you living i don't where, know where, where are the few places you want to have things are different on? you know i didn't know i was gonna move to vegas two years ago um i'm moving to dubai i didn't know that last month i'll see you there uh-huh so who knows where life's going to take me five, two years from now, one year from now. Okay. Then, All I know I'm going to Dubai and I got I'm getting a spot out here in Vegas to like, you know, be closer to the family. But, you know, then part time I'm being in Dubai. 
Who knows, dude? Might get a spot in Costa Rica and, you know, be out there for a little bit and in the woods and with the birds. Did you tell him you want to change El Salvador? I, I forgot to that say that. That was your big dream. You forgot. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Should I just say it real quick? Just say put it out there. You all might right, watch it out there. Yeah, yeah. Fifty and be like, "Whoa, I said <laughs> I that." I know, huh? That's crazy. So, so say it all right now. So pretty much, you know, my end goal is like, when I'm older, is uh, I understand. You know, you need the money, the power to change things, and I really like the president. Um, the reason why I got to get more uh professionals because we finished. I thought you liked the president. Like, like, like who? Um, the president of El Salvador. See, come on now. Yeah, Everybody yeah. Think you Everybody's about. yeah. <laughs> They're like what? Sleepy Joe. <laughs> Everybody thinks I'm talking about Sleepy Joe, but it was, <laughs> it was called no, not Sleepy Joe. Um, talking about the president of El Salvador. Um, I want to build up my following because I feel like with the the following that I have and the way he wants to go about the country is very good, and I believe that we could kind of connect the dots and make El Salvador a better country. Hey, man, you'll never know. It sounds crazy right now, but I saw, you know who Patrick, uh, Patrick David is? Uh, Pet David, or what is it? The one that people helping people? Uh, no, but the I know. The owner of it? People. So he he just put out this uh, a YouTube video, and he was talking about how Logan Paul is going to be the president of the United States one day. Mm-hmm. And everybody started laughing in the crowd. And he's like, yeah, you guys are all laughing now. But wait until like he becomes The Rock. Mm-hmm. Like Imagine people saying that about The Rock. Um, you know, the, the, the wrestler, Rock. Yeah. The wrestler. Like 20 years ago. People mm-hmm. would have laughed like, what? The Rock? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But now it's like if The Rock were to like run for president, he would probably win. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because he's loved. And Logan Paul is one of the biggest people out there. And who knows who it's going to be 10 years from now. He might be immature now, but in 10 years from now, 20 years from now, he might be like a rock and become the president. He might fuck around and be like run for president. The universe is wild. Kanye did. The universe is wild. Or Kanye is, right? Or whatever. <laughs> so, I mean, anything's possible. So, what do you, so you want to go out so there? So, I want to do that and... Uh, bring opportunities. Long term, bring opportunities. And, you know, he's trying to um, bring better opportunities to the country and... I believe in the next 10 to 20 years, I'll be able to connect some dots and, you know, whether that's me be president or whatever, but I'm going to be tied in over there and be a part of that change and part of that journey. So let me paint this image for you guys, this mental image. So this dude is going to have his 10 kids, be well off. At that, maybe more. Have his 20 kids, <laughs> be well off, go back to his home country, take take our American money. Built that stuff up. <laughs> Be on his drizzy. How y'all let me run it down here? I ain't even, even from around, around here. here. And then and then that's how he's going to go. He's going to put his El Salvador cape on. And when it's time to hop in his coffee, he's just going to be like, do 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 like, that's it. I, I beat the game. Yeah. That's a, like it. One thing that we were talking about earlier, too, is that um, what's changed from back then to now is, uh you know, having the stuff, to like the luxury or just a lifestyle that I've dreamed of, you know, nothing changes that. It may, it made me think or believe that anything's possible. And this is just regular. Now it's like, okay, this is life. What's the next step? Your emotions got used to it. I'm used to it now. You know, I'm not jaded to it. I'm great gratitude every day, you know, but this, I'm used to it now. So I'm like, okay, what's next? And sky's the limit, you know, and that's, that's, that's what I'm shooting for, and I'll, I'll. That's what I'm gonna live on. You know, that's my that's my journey. That's part of my purpose, and you know, like Nip- Nipsey Hussle always says, like I'm a. I don't want to put that. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> These words create. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what's called it? You know, um, I'm gonna get there. Yeah. <laughs> Don't have me looking back at this podcast like in my eyes. Like, oh, I was there. Yeah, I was there. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, I always believed in him. Yeah. So here's <laughs> what I see for you. I see plenty of more. I see plenty more businesses. That's just your gift, um, business and orchestration. I um, thought you were about to say bitches. 
He's a way more he, bitches he, for sure. He needs more help <laughs> on that one. <laughs> Guaranteed. No, but I I think that you're going to keep leveling up and conditioning your life to higher levels, bigger numbers, bigger experiences. And um, I think it's going to get to the point where no matter what you buy for yourself, it's just going to be like, just feels like nothing. It's yeah. going to feel like. You've seen it from the bottom, bro. It's gonna feel like you seeing what I was able to cap what I'm, what I'm capable of now, mm -hmm. and what has been two years, three years, 100%. four, whatever. So I have no doubt, especially in our generation, everything's going online, money's being exchanged, ideas are being born, different platforms, like billions of dollars. There's in the opportunities second, out gonna, there. Billions of dollars in a second is not going to sound so crazy. That's what I'm saying. Um. So, um. But what I see for you, I think it's gonna get to a point where you're like dang like i just want to de dedicate my life to bettering people i mean it's already happening you're like all right i just people helping people <laughs> you're going to start a pyramid scheme oh that's what it was when i first met you too you're trying to get me no don't try scheme. to put that out there yeah. on me no he's we like hey do you, nobles he was like we you heard of nobles. uh people helping people hold on i'm still he's like no no he was, hold he was, on oh, i was yeah. prophesying your life yeah. hold on yeah, i'm trying to put some <laughs> blessings on you you're over here trying to pyramid scheme me dang we're gonna look back at this all right so and I think you're going to be like, okay, I want to do things to help people. And then you're going to help people get some money. Then you're going to help people learn about business. And then you're going to start helping people more like on a deeper, uh, some type of like internal level. Because like, you're going to age, you're going to mature. And then when you have your kids, you're going to see yourself grow up again. And you're going to start thinking about values and stuff to instill. You're going to want to instill that in culture. So I say... That the billions happen. I say you work on El Salvador. Um, Which I never said this publicly before. Never I said probably it. told only like three people. Yeah. Because I just know that just sounds so crazy. Yeah. To some people. So people are like, that sounds crazy. But a lot of people don't understand that El Salvador is only like six million people. Mm -hmm. I could literally run ads right now for like a couple thousand a month. And make sure that everybody in El Salvador knows who the hell I am. Yeah. That'd be really dope. So, like, I could so do that right here, right now. Your mind's finding ways to do it. And that's what I'm saying. So, what's one way to get super, like, famous and popular in El Salvador and people to hear my message and everything is Facebook. I can just run ads. Facebook ads. <laughs> you thought you had to do something big? You are just like, hey, bro, like, <laughs> you're the rack. Yeah. Change the culture. Yeah. No, but I think. Change the economy. I think it's going to get to a, a, a deeper space and you're going to help people somehow transcend into this new level of earth that we're growing into, whether it be like there's more opportunities happening, the spiritual growth of the, the kids, the people, the mindset. People are becoming more abundant minded and. You know, you're going to have a, a big, you can play a big role in pulling the consciousness up. Yeah. That's what I say. So this is dope. Blessings. This is really dope. And I and I don't have a name for my podcast yet. So Me it's going to be one of the first ones. And it's super that cool. Was a cool I, one. I'm, I'm grateful you're able to share your value and your experience with other people. And I'm glad to be a part of this story. Maybe on the next one that we do, we could uh, give out more tangible uh, like business advice, you know? I know a lot of people like the story though. Yeah. Because the story is like what they like gravitate to. Mm -hmm. So they want to hear all the, you know, the bull, the BS. Yeah. But um, maybe in the next one we could talk about like go more into detail about opening business. Opening up like business. LLC or something. Yeah. Just like not even opening like that's boring, but like more just like, hey, how to grow a business, how I started from zero and how I built a eight figure business from scratch, you know, like literally step by step what mm -hmm. i did maybe i covered it a little bit kind of briefly of right course. now but but i think um on the next one we should get more into detail with that and you know well, see i'm what very happens. i'm very proud of you it's a blessing to be able to see someone's words and thoughts form into something in real life it reaffirms my belief you know makes it, it real these are things i'm gonna like instill in my kids and you know i can't it's like i can't see the world any way other than that now like every time people are talking and they're actually i know everyone's creating because i'm like i've seen people do this i've seen so many different cool stories imagine me life. imagine me doing this like three years ago doing what this right even this like podcast thing i know i'd probably be faded right now like what i know <laughs> what'd you say <laughs> for real what do you mean bro <laughs> over, over here fighting your friends and stuff <laughs> yeah. in your mom's kitchen oh yeah oh yeah i was just telling about that story when i dragged him 
down the you're table. Messed you're messed up. <laughs> you need repentance. Yeah. <laughs> you right. See, I wasn't lying about that because he thought I was lying. He's like, no way you did that. Oh, my God. Well, that's it, guys. So. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. I hope you guys got a lot of really cool value. I know I did, and I know I probably feel Follow us on uh, social media real quick. So my social media, follow me on Instagram. It's Tony Guzman, T-O-N-Y-Y-G-U-Z-M-A-N. And then look me up on YouTube, Anthony Guzman. You'll see some of my e-commerce stuff and uh, TikTok, you know. <laughs> tony guzman or whatever or anthony guzman uh we'll put it up on the the screen right here so cool yeah i really don't like i, I just made another instagram because everyone keeps making me i don't like to be on it but i think this one i made is dewan walker d-e-j-u-a-n-w-a-l-k-e-r one and then my youtube is dewan walker and hold on <laughs> i felt good uh probably same with my bless you tiktok i think i don't know you'll, you'll find me though yeah you'll find you we'll, we'll put it up all right cool cool, cool.